Hello everyone, welcome back to another Minecraft Create Mod tutorial. This episode, I'll be going over fluids, fluid pi pipes, and all the associated items. Uh, one thing I'm going to say right before I get started is I will not be covering how to automate potion crafting. Um, next week I'll be having kind of a longer video on that, and also show you how to automate gunpowder, redstone, and uh, glowstone. So stay tuned for that. So I'm going to start off the tutorial by going over all the blocks that interact with fluids in the Create Mod. First thing I'm going to go over is the fluid pipe. Now the fluid pipe is really cheap to make. Three copper, um, two of them turned into copper sheets. Gets you eight fluid pipes, very cheap. Um, basically what they do is they work as your default block for moving fluids around. So you can kind of place them however you want. Um, they can interface with tanks, uh, basins, or any of the others like uh, blocks added by Kratmon. You can also do intersections, you can do three-way, four-way, um, all the way up to six, so you can actually, if you really wanted to, you can have like six fluid pipes coming off of one, works pretty seamlessly. Um, one thing to note is that if you wanted to place two lines next to each other, it's actually not possible because they will connect, um, and there really is no way to kind of disconnect those, even with a wrench, it's not going to do it. Um, another thing to note with the fluid pipes is if you right-click, on a straight section of pipe with a wrench, it'll kind of turn glass, so you can actually see the fluid flow through it. The next block here is the mechanical pump. So the mechanical pump is what you basically use to move fluids through pipes. So if you have like a line of pipes, you need to have at least one mechanical pump in that line to move the fluids from one end to the other. And the way to interface with the pump is just with a regular small cog wheel against the kind of cog wheel on the pipe. Uh, give this power and it'll transfer fluid to matching whatever kind of speed this cog wheel's moving at. The next item is a smart fluid pipe. So basically with a smart fluid pipe, it's a pipe with a filter. So for example, if I had a line coming off here and I wanted to separate out two different fluids, what I could do is I could have the smart fluid pipes. I could say, I'm only gonna send one fluid this way into another fluid this way. The next item is the fluid valve. So what the fluid valve does is it can either stop or start flow through a pipe. Um, you can start or stop that flow um, by basically grabbing kind of any create power and interfacing with a shaft here. Turn it one way to turn it on and turn it the other way to turn it off. The next item here is the tank. So the tank is what actually stores the fluid in it. Each one of these blocks holds eight buckets, essentially, of liquid. Um, fluid tanks will connect too high like this, and they go all the way up, I believe, to 32 tall. Um, you can also do, if you do like a two by two section like this, you'll see it will also connect. And then that, you can also build up to 32 tall. So you can potentially hold a lot of fluid in one connected tank. And then this, you can either pump fluids in or out, by interfacing with the pipes. The next block is the hose pulley. So what the hose pulley does is basically use that to either suck up or dispense water into a space. And I'll kind of go pretty in depth on the hose pulley because there's a lot to it and there's it's really powerful what you can actually do with it. The next item is the item drain. Uh, what the item drain is, is it'll take any potion, bucket, and empty that fluid into your pipe system if you're pumping out of the item drain. Then we have the spout. Uh, what the spout does is it'll basically take a fluid and then dispense it into your bucket or bottle or um, whatever other crafting recipe you use as a spout to basically take the fluid and add it to an item. The last item is the portable fluid interface. Uh, I won't actually be going over this in the video, uh, however, if you check out my trains video, a uh, card should be appearing now. Uh, part of that video, I do go in depth about how this works. Basically, if you've got a moving attraction, you can move fluids from your non-moving attraction into or out of your moving attraction. So first, I'm going to start by going in depth on the mechanical pump and the fluid pipes. Over here, I have a creative fluid tank that's basically full of a potion. Uh, what the creative fluid tank is, is basically you right-click it with a potion and it'll fill up with that 
potion, or you could use a bucket of something. I'll fill up with that item and store it inside. Um, and here I have my two pumps. Uh, these are just going at max speed for demonstration purposes. It'll move the same distance no matter what speed it's going at, but it'll move less fast. So if you look at the pipes that I have right clicked with a wrench to make glass, you can kind of see the kind of particles flowing down the pipe. I'm afraid I kind of slow this down. So just say we're slowing it down to 64. You'll see that the particles are moving significantly slower. So what that basically means is if I were to break this pipe, let it clear out and then right click it again, you can see it very slowly start to kind of trickle through. Whereas if I were to go ahead and speed this up back to max, so it'll very quickly go all the way down to the end. And now I have this little demonstration to kind of show you guys that it'll only travel 16 blocks. So starting counting one with a pump, it'll go all the way up to 16 blocks away. Then after that, it'll stop and I'd have to add another mechanical pump right here to actually be able to continue on going down the pipe. Another thing you'll note is that at the end of the pipe, it's kind of spitting out the potion. Now what's really cool about that is it's actually giving me the, the effect. So I have fire resistant potion coming down the pipe and being spit out the end. I can stand here and get the fire resistance buff. So that's actually really cool. It'll just kind of spit it out. If I were to change this over to water, or it would work the same with lava. So if I go ahead and right click my tank to turn it to water, you'll see the pipes kind of clear out and the water starts to go through. And when it gets to the end, you'll see the particles for a second, then it'll actually spit out a water source block at the end. So if you accidentally like crack your pipe, you're gonna end up with a leak and it'll potentially flood whatever system you're trying to build. Next, I'll be going over the valves and the hose pulleys. So the first thing is I have these two valves set up with some copper valve handles attached to them. What the valve handle does is it basically works the same as the hand crank where I can right click this to give it some rotational force. Um, however, it fits in a lot better with the pipe look and everything. So you go ahead and open this. You see the arrows turn and it turns green. That means our fluid valve is open. And when they're red, it means it's closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come over here, turn my crank um, by shift right clicking to turn one way. Just holding right click will turn the other way. So I'm gonna shift right click to open it. I'm gonna come over here and show you the pulley. So we got a motor hooked up to um, the mechanical pump. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this pulley down into this little water pool. So you can say lower it down in there. And what's actually going to happen is it's going to basically empty this water pool. So you can see the water start to kind of flow through and to wait a second for it to actually like dispense into the inventory. Um, but once it does, you'll see the water start to get sucked out of this little pool. It'll actually get sucked out of the pool into our fluid tank. So we could potentially like, so it'd work as a water source to kind of suck up out into a tank. Kind of whatever you want to use it for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this back up. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna fill this basin back up to show you guys what else you could do with this. So the pulley works that way but it also will work in reverse. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this valve, drop down this pulley all the way to the bottom. And what's gonna happen is, as it sucks the water out of there, it's gonna fill up in here. Now what's really cool about this is it'll basically fill up this entire area, including blocks that can be waterlogged. So if I were to go ahead and place a slab in there, you'll see as it kind of sucks the water out of here, it's placing it back in here. It'll fill this whole space up all the way to the top, including waterlogging this lab block. So if I kind of zoom out, um, you'll see that it kind of stopped at the level where the, the little pump head was at. So if I go ahead and lower this all the way down to the bottom, like so, it'll continue to suck the water out of there and pump it into there. They notice it stopped pumping and that's because our the head of our pump is already facing all the way at the bottom in water. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise that up a block. Now I see it's gonna to continue to pump the water. So 
So here I've gone ahead and hopped into a default world to show you a little bit more of what the hose plug can do in your survival world. So what I can do is I can grab my hose pulley, drop it to the bottom of the ocean, and when I turn this on, it'll suck up the water like normal. However, because this body of water is so large, um, it's basically going to treat it as an infinite water source. So it'll suck up this water, fill up this tank infinitely, and you'll never run out of water. So if you want an infinite water source, basically just go to an ocean, pump out water from there. Now, on the other hand, if I wanted to say clear out the ocean, um, the way to do that is actually pretty simple. So you do have to kind of section off whatever area you want to clear out. Um, and for example, I'm just going to go ahead and lower this all the way down to the bottom. And now, and now when I go ahead and activate the motor, you'll see it's going to start spinning, so it would be pumping, and it is pumping water out. However, if I kind of fly around here, you'll notice that it's not actually emptying any source blocks. And that's because it's kind of reached the threshold of how large this ocean can be. So it's basically treating this as an infinite source. So now what I can do is I can take this and pull it all the way up. So now we got our pump sitting two blocks under the surface of the water. You see it's pumping our water out. Now if we fly over here to the corner, we can see that it is actually starting to drain this area. So this is super helpful if you want to actually make like a guardian farm or you want to clear out the ocean for another project. Uh, what you can do is instead of taking it all the way from the bottom, you can start up a few blocks, then after you clear that area, go down a bit more and then down a bit more and then down a bit more. Um, and if you want to empty this water, what you can do is you can just basically put your hose pulley into the ocean and have it dispense out into the ocean. That's how you would clear out a large area of water. So the next thing I'm going to go over is the item drain, smart food pipes, and the spout. So the first item I'm going to go through is the item drain. So the way the item drain works is if you were to take a potion or a bucket, right click it on the item drain, you'll see the item drain fills up, and then it'll basically, I got it being sucked up by this motor here. So the motor is sucking it out and then into our storage place. So it's pretty simple, you can either right click it, um, alternatively you can drop it in a barrel, and as it goes past, you'll see it kind of flip upside down, empty out, and then over into the next storage. So if you wanted to fully automate this, you could just have it go on going past, emptying your bottles or buckets out into your system. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a whole bunch of potions, dump them in, and kind of just watch them empty. I'm just going to throw them all in this barrel here, and then you can see one by one, there's kind of empty out into the uh, two tanks. Um, now you'll notice that if, say, I was already emptying the speed potion, the health potion has to wait. So here I'm emptying the speed potion and have to wait for the health potion to finish. And then when I'm coming over here, I actually have my smart fluid pipes separating them out into two different fluid tanks. And so the way I do that is basically all you do is you grab your potion, then you right click it on this little fluid filter spot, and it'll basically say, all right, I'm only going to accept this potion. So I'm basically separating the two out, these two areas. Now the next thing I'm going to go over is the spout. So what the spout's actually going to do is it's going to basically take whatever potion is inside of it, and then potion are fluid, so you can use water and drop it into a bucket. Um, but basically what I'm having is having my speed potions come into here, it's being pumped up into the spout. And you can see if it's on a belt, what will happen is as the item goes past, it'll stop, wait for the spout. Once the spout is filled up, it'll basically drop it into the potion and it'll keep going. And if you want to do this manually, what you could do is you could grab yourself a depot, right click whatever potion, um, make sure your potion's in here, right click your bottle on here, and it'll empty it out onto the depot. So now I'm going to briefly go over how to make your blaze cakes, glowstone, gunpowder, and redstone with a create mod. Um, I'm not going to show you a fully automatic system for these yet, that's coming in the next video, uh, but I can show you kind of just really simply how to do it. So basically it's using the item spout and a depot. Um, I believe you could actually use a belt too if you wanted to do it that way, uh, where you have the cinder flower going by in a belt. Um, 
the way this is going to work is you get the Cinder Flower by crushing Netherrack. And then for the Glowstone, Gunpowder, and Redstone, what you're going to do is you're going to place it on the depot or the belt. Potion of Night Vision for Glowstone. Instant damage, Potion of Harming for Gunpowder. And a Potion of Strength for Redstone. So up here, i got my Potion of... What is this? Potion of Strength. It's pumping out and giving me my Redstone. Now I can actually do this. This is the same way you get Blaze Cakes. So first got a Compact using a Press. Eggs, sugar, and cinder flour to get your blaze cake base. And then that you would fill with the spout, filling it with some lava. And that gives you your blaze cake. So it's a little bit of a quicker video this week, but I think it's very important to do nonetheless. Um, one last little tidbit I'm going to tell you is the fluid pipes and crate do actually work with other modded liquids. So if you want to use it with Tinker's Construct or whatever other mod that adds fluids, um, Create will actually work perfectly well with those fluids. All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Bye-bye.